Sometimes you start a demo project and have to keep stripping off layers like a couple of Inuits getting down and dirty. You go deeper and realize that you need to jack the house and it's going to take a lot longer than you thought to finish. Replacing a sail play. We pretended we were your mom's OnlyFans channel and kept removing the layers until there was nothing left. Why does it look rotten? We were equally as horrified by what we found as you were when you found out about her channel. While we're on this topic, Make sure to smash that subscribe button. Ours, not your mom's, you sicko. Whoever built my house was probably an illiterate raging alcoholic. After demolishing their work, I am certainly considering becoming one too. They built the deck off a ledger that was attached to a couple bay windows. Don't do this, I will fucking slap you. The deck was well built, but lacked flashing behind the ledger, which was causing some rather significant issues concerning rot and carpenter ants. When we got to the sill plate, we realized that it, too, looked like your mom's blue waffle. Not only that, but whoever framed this section of the house decided to do a balloon frame instead of a platform frame. That means that the wall studs rest directly on the sill plate instead of the floor joists. In order to replace the rotten sill plate, we would need to attach the wall studs to the floor joists before we can take the load off the sill plate. Then, when we jack the floor joists up, we are also jacking up the wall studs and the roof. We attached a couple 3 8 inch lag screws between each joist and stud above the section of the sill plate that needed to be replaced. We needed to only jack the house up enough to remove the sill plate and no more. Otherwise, our walls and floors would end up with more cracks than a rap video. Once the floors were jacked up enough to remove the load off the sill plate, we put some shims underneath the floor joists. These shims will hold all the load like a little shim bukkake while we remove and replace the sill plate. To remove the sill plate, we cut around the anchor bolt and trim the toenails holding the studs and joists to the sill plate and slid the sill out. We replaced the joists with a piece of ground contact pressure treated 2x4. To get the sill plate back in, we cut a notch where the anchor bolt goes and then used some weird method of measurement that caused me to cut the notch short. Just thought I'd throw that in. On the underside of the sill, we installed a foam sill gasket, which was really challenging to keep in place while we slid the sill plate back in. We ended up using construction adhesive to hold it in place. To maintain the integrity of the sill plate, I glued back in a piece of wood where the notch was. When the sill plate was back in, I put my nuts on the anchor bolt. Did you notice that I didn't mention that I took these off before removing the sill plate? That's because they weren't there. Who needs to anchor their house to the foundation anyway? At this point, we were done with all the jacking. So we put the lotion and tissues away, removed the temporary shims, set the house back down, buttoned back up, and washed our hands of this atrocity. Go watch our other videos!